Trumbull, Connecticut, home to the 1989 Little League World Series champions, P90X inventor Tony Horton, and Celebrity Apprentice contestant Lisa Lampanelli. We're here for the 2020 Basement Miniature Golf Open. We're live from Trumbull, Connecticut, where Sam Reed is just moments away from teeing off. I'm Todd Butts, uncle, here with Charles Whitmore. Chuck? If Reed can walk away with a win here, he will be one step closer to what is known as the Miniature Golf Career Grand Slam. He's already won the Professional Putters Association National Championship and the Monster Mini Golf Classic in Las Vegas. If he can win today in Trumbull, all he'll need to do is win the Pirates Cove Putting for Progress Tournament in August to join that elusive Mini Golf Grand Slam Club. Let's take a look at the course. The basement open course is real beauty. Three holes, a par eight, and it's storied in tradition. A space typically used for storage, laundry, learning new hobbies. It's got various obstacles, surfaces, and changes in elevation. We've got it all. Here's some key things to be aware of. The greens are incredibly fast and surprisingly uneven. You've got low ceilings and low light fixtures, and sometimes the boiler will make very strange noises, startling golfers. Let's take a look at hole one. Hole one offers the greatest change in elevation of the course and an important bounce off the toolbox. You've gotta to be careful approaching the hole here. Too far to the right and you're stuck under the drum set. Too far to the left and you're up against the bumper pool table. Reed is at the tee box for hole one, trying to get a good read on the green here. Yeah, you're gonna to have to speak up, Chuck. I can't hear a word you're saying. A phenomenal shot off the tee. Great bounce. Can he do it? Yes! Wow. Amazing! I mean, in terms of what you're looking for in golf, it does not get much better than a hole-in-one. What a way to start the round. Hey, I'm gonna go grab a snack. Do you want anything? What? It's just three holes. Oh, you sure? All right, I was thinking about maybe some taquitos or pizza rolls or something. Now, as you can see, Reed is already at one under for the course. Staying there would keep him in contention for the lead, but getting as low as three under would guarantee a win here today. Let's take a look at hole two. Hole two starts with a straight shot under the bumper pool table. You've got to avoid the chairs and the paint can in order to bounce off the door and ramp over the threshold here into the laundry room. A mistake here could mean missing the ramp completely or getting stuck in the pit of despair. Once you're in the laundry room, the course opens up, but the terrain gets even more uneven. Just like hole one, you start off with a blind shot. <laughs> That's right, Chuck. It's like discharging a firearm in a pitch black room. Hole two is six and a half feet longer than hole one, which makes it a par three. We're back here on the tee box where Reed is lining up his first putt. And you're sure you didn't have a previous career as a librarian or a funeral director or something? Here he goes. Great shot. Avoids the hazard. And the ball has gone just out of frame here, but you can tell from the sound that it has ricocheted off the washing machine. <laughs> Chuck, I'm pretty sure that was the dryer. The noise would have been totally different if it was the washer. And there's the ball again coming to rest just inches from the hole. Amazing. Now this looks like a simple putt here, but the steep slope and shallow depth of these homemade holes means that the ball could ramp over the hole or bounce out once it's in. Now this is allowed by WMSF rules. He's moving the ball one putter length away from the nearest obstacle. We'll see if he can put it away. And he does! A well-played ball. Great speed, great rhythm, just a phenomenal putt. Well, folks, it looks like that's all she wrote. Uh, no, Todd, we still have one more hole. No, sorry, I mean, that's all that our script supervisor, Kimberly, wrote. Those are, uh, those are all the notes that I have. Well, as you can see, another birdie performance for Reed, which brings him to two under on the day. We'll see if he can keep up the momentum as he moves to hole three, the most challenging of the three holes. Coverage of the 2020 Basement Open is brought to you by Charmin Ultra. You don't normally shell out for the thick stuff, but it was the only brand left on the shelf, so you thought, sure, I'll pay $20 for a pack of toilet paper. Charmin Ultra. And by Amazon Prime. Offering you two-day shipping when you could have easily gone to the store, and two-month shipping now that you can't leave your house. Classic. And by 7 o'clock in the morning. 7 a.m. says, I miss you. We used to hang out all the time, but I haven't seen you in weeks. Call me. 
7 a.m. Now let's take a look at hole three. Hole three is a straightaway, but it's a whopping 25 feet from the tee box to the hole. It's also incredibly narrow. You wanna watch out for the exercise bench, the shelf, and of course, the swinging pendulum of death. Hit that at the wrong time and you could be sent flying into the water heat on the right, or the pile of rubbish on the left. It's gonna take a lot of focus here. Remember, he needs to get a par on this hole to stay in the running, but a birdie will secure the victory. Wait, what is he doing? Is he, is he getting a different club? I don't believe it. He's switching to his pitching wedge. It looks like he's going to pitch it over the obstacle. Well, stuff me with beans and call me an enchilada. This is just crazy town. Look, Chuck, they call it putt-putt for a reason. It's not chip-chip. Oh, now it, it looks like he's decided against it. Phew. And I'm glad he did. I almost soiled myself. Here he goes for the putt. And he's through the obstacle. Oh, man, that is just classic heart-stopping miniature golf right there. He timed that almost... Perfectly. A good lie for the ball. He's in birdie position here. And as you can see, Reed will have to make do with some cramped quarters here as he lines up his next putt. If I had to guess, it might be safer to bounce it off the wall and use the gluey method. And he's done it! Three birdies in a row to take home the basement open title. Now, I believe Sam needed a haircut right around the time that quarantine started, and as you can tell, it's only gotten worse. What a performance from Sam Reed. Reed handled himself with poise throughout the whole course, and it's clear to see he did not count his chickens before they hatched. I don't know what that means, but I do know this much. He sure didn't celebrate before he knew that he had secured the victory. Todd, it's an idiom. Oh, well, that just feels unprofessional. In a moment, we'll go live to the post-round press conference, where we'll get to hear from the man of the hour. Just a great day all around. I know I can spend 10, 12 hours a day playing mini golf. My wife sure doesn't like it when I do that though. <laughs> Describe how you're feeling right now. Thoughts, reactions? Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, first of all, I'd like to thank God. Uh, I think to be three quarters of the way to a, a mini golf grand slam, 75%, uh, you know, six eighths, uh, 12, 16, I feel pretty on top of the world right now. And uh, I, I feel like this is probably how Secretariat felt after he won the Triple Crown or, you know, how Tiger felt when he was on his way to his Grand Slam in a single season. So, you know, somewhere between a horse and a tiger. Yeah. Yeah. You pulled your wedge out on the third hole there. Can you tell us what you were thinking? Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, that pendulum was psyching me out. It's been giving me trouble all week in practice, and I just thought if I could pitch it over, you know, I could avoid the obstacle completely, but eventually, you know, my training won out, and I remembered that with this type of surface, the ball would kind of just bounce indefinitely, uh, and so I zeroed it in. I did what I needed to do, and it ended up paying off. A lot of people said that you didn't have what it takes to get here today. What do you have to say to people like that? Well, first of all, uh, let me just say that, you know, I'm, I'm glad they're watching. I think this sport needs more fans, uh, regardless of whether they love me or hate me. So I appreciate that. Um, but I would say, you know, I just try to, to tune people like that out for the most part and actually tune almost everybody out except for my life coach, Celine Dion. So, um, Beyond that, I don't know that I have much more to say besides, uh, you know, we'll see you in Tokyo in 2021. Thank you, guys. Well said. Well, that just about wraps it up here for our coverage of the 2020 Basement Open. Until next time, I'm Todd Butts, Uncle, And I'm Charles Widmore. Thank you for joining us.